Today is Ash Wednesday, a day of repentance and fasting for Catholics as the preparation for Lent prior to Easter celebrations of the Lord Jesus' resurrection. I am not Catholic, but there are abundant reasons for Christians to fast and pray. Jesus was punished for the sins of the human race on the cross and then defeated sin and death three days later. All who believe in Jesus are also given eternal life. But Jesus spoke of a future great tribulation which would come upon the earth before his return. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say to you, See, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, so that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. You may have been taught that Jesus would remove believers from the earth before the great tribulation, but Jesus' own words tell you that is wrong. Just because people have taught you false doctrine, don't give up on Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. He that acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Sadly, many Protestants have called the Pope and Catholics the Antichrist. But Catholics believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Muslims do not. Muslims only recognize Jesus, who they call Isa, as a prophet. They deny Christ's deity. Muslims believe that it was not Jesus who died on the cross, but Judas, the son of perdition. Babylon is the mother of harlots. The most vicious practice of the Babylonians is the following, wrote Herodotus. Every woman in the country must take her seat in the shrine of Aphrodite, and once in her life consort with a stranger. And only when she has been with him and done her service to the goddess is she allowed to go home. All the women who are tall and beautiful are quickly released, but the unattractive ones have to wait for a long time before they can fulfill the law. Some of them have to wait three or four years. According to Zechariah 5, 8-11, this wickedness of women would be flown into a new base. This new base is that which the Kaaba in Mecca sits on, making Saudi Arabia the whore of Babylon. And on her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. I will tell you the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, and these are seven kings. Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he comes he must continue a short space, and the beast that was and is not Even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goes into perdition. Kings here is Basilius, in Greek meaning power base. Nimrod founded Babel, in which worship of the moon began. His son Merodach further perverted it. 2 Kings 17, 
Shalmaneser king of Assyria took Samaria, and carried the northern tribes of Israel into Assyria, and replaced them with men from Babylon and other foreign cities who worshipped the moon god and other pagan gods. Nebuchadnezzar and his sons continued to worship the moon. Rome ruled while John wrote, and it was conquered by 410 A.D. Muhammad had a following from 610 to 632 A.D., uniting the Arabs. He had various successors, and one of them moved the capital of the Caliphate to Baghdad, 65 miles north of Babylon in the 800s. The religious beast, which has worshipped the moon god since the days of Nimrod, is now called Islam. The last Muslim empire, or caliphate, was the Ottoman Empire that lasted from 1299 to 1923. They backed Germany in World War I and suffered partitioning after the war. This seventh head is the head with the fatal wound which was healed. Worship of the moon god was always the dominant religion of Mesopotamia. The moon god was worshipped by praying toward Mecca several times a day, which had a temple to the moon god with an idol of black stone set in the wall of the Kaaba. Fasting for the month which begins and ends with the crescent moon, and gathering on Fridays for prayers were pagan rites practiced by the Arabs long before Muhammad was born. In the 1950s, a temple to the moon god was excavated at Hazer in Palestine. Two idols of the moon god were found. Each was a statue of a man sitting upon a throne with a crescent moon carved on his chest. Several smaller statues were also found, which were identified by their inscriptions as the daughters of the moon god. These are named in the Quran and called the Satanic Verses by Salman Rushdie. The moon god's name, Sin, is a part of such Arabic geography as Mount Sinai and the wilderness of Sin. The moon god's name was Sin, but his title was Al-Ilah, the deity, meaning that he was the chief among the gods. While they worshipped 360 gods at the Kaaba in Mecca, the moon god was the chief deity. Muhammad threw out all the other gods at the Kaaba except for the moon god and united the Arab tribes to worship Allah. Haran in southwest Turkey was also noted for its devotion to the moon god. For more info, read Islamic Invasion by Robert Morey. The swastika came to be identified as the oldest Aryan symbol by several writers in the late 19th century. Aryan means noble. In the 1930s, Shah Reza Pahlavi admired Hitler and the concept of the Aryan master race. In 1935, the Shah changed the name of Persia to Iran. In Persian, Iran means land of the Aryans. The Allies disrupted their relations after World War II, but by 1970, West Germany was the European country with the largest Iranian expatriate community. It's 1938, and Iran is Germany, and Iran is racing to arm itself with atomic bombs, Netanyahu told delegates to the annual United Jewish Communities General Assembly. Believe him and stop him. Iran has said it would respond to any attack by targeting U.S. interests and America's ally Israel, as well as closing the Strait of Hormuz, a vital route for world oil supplies. On November 12, 2008, Iran successfully tested a two-stage missile with a range of 1,200 miles able to reach Israel. According to Forbes magazine, there are actually two planned protests being organized by Facebook in Saudi Arabia, one on March 11th, followed by one on March 20th. The two possible hotspots for democratic protest are Riyadh and Jeddah. The Shia underclass inhabitants of the oil-rich eastern province are also expected to hold their own demonstrations.
Revelation 17, 15 through 18. The waters which you saw where the whore sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Saudis are primarily Wahhabi, and the Sunnis and Shia detest them. Saudi Arabia must fall for the Sunni Shia Caliphate to be realized. It doesn't take much to light an oiled field or derrick on fire, but it sure takes a lot to cap them again. The Iraqis set over 600 oil wells on fire. More than 10,000 workers from 37 countries were called in to assist in well control. Resources necessary to extinguish and cap the wells included 361 water lagoons, each with a million gallon capacity, 450 kilometers of water piping, and more than 5,000 pieces of heavy equipment. Kuwait spent an estimated $1.5 billion on the firefighting effort alone. Conservative estimates of the total economic cost of the occupation to Kuwait are in the range of 30 to $50 billion. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities." Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double to her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. How much she has glorified herself, and lived deliciously! So much torment and sorrow give her. For she said in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall mourn her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is your judgment come. Ash Wednesday uses ashes of the palms used on Palm Sunday. Instead of mourning over higher gas prices, take the time to pray that the people of Saudi Arabia will come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ before their lives turn to ashes. During World War II, the Saudis supplied the Allies with large supplies of oil, but there were strings attached. We could not allow Jews to flee to America. FDR turned away Jewish refugee boats from our shores. In return, the U.S. got to build an Air Force base on the east coast of Saudi Arabia. The only U.S. president not to kiss up to the Saudis was JFK, and according to his vice president, Lyndon Johnson, it was the oil boys who shot him. Pray that news agencies have the wisdom not to send any females into Saudi Arabia and only send men with military training with prearranged exit strategies. It is interesting that they plan to hold a riot on Purim. Traditionally, Jews hold a day of fasting before Purim, in remembrance of those who fasted three days prior to Esther's bold request to save her people. They need saving again. If you are fasting and praying today, you might Pray that Christians in the Middle East will be able to flee to safety. Pray for families of those martyred for their faith in Jesus. Pray for bravery and peace for Christians yet to be martyred. 
Pray God's comfort and strength for imprisoned believers. Pray for more Muslims to come to faith in Jesus. Pray that Christians will have wisdom and understanding as God pours His judgment out upon Babylon.